Police officers cops of Reddit who solved paranormal cases getting calls because of paranormal disturbances. What actually happened? Had a lady used to call all the time, say there were people in her house. She would make up bizarre stories like someone came in and had a shower etc. Some money was missing from her handbag. It'd only been working in the area for about a month and it'd taken probably 15 calls from her. Anyway eventually I freaking cracked because it was crapping me. We have some cameras you can set up so I put one in a tree facing the front door. Lo and behold, her neighbor walks in the house. Comes out about 15 minutes later with wet looking hair lol. Had a woman call at 1030 at night saying there were spooky faces on her TV, with names like Matt and Amber underneath them. The calling party was convinced that Matt and Amber are ghosts and had made it into her TV. She began to get more upset the more I asked her about the situation. When I asked her to describe the gaves, she explained that one was green, and one was blue, and there was another nonsense word on the screen she had never heard before. I asked her to spell it for me, N-E-T-F-L-I-X. Turns out she had accidentally hit the Netflix button on her new smart TV her son bought her on Craigslist and it had the old owner's Netflix information showing on the screen. When I explained it to her she got even more upset advising me I don't want these filthy people's names on my television. I pay my taxes. We ended up having to send an officer to check on her. Being that ignorant must be so amazing to that individual. Like, just seeing everyday things must be so magical to them. I can only imagine. When I was 21 I worked at a gas station in the middle of the night. I had a lot of cops come through, just to check in occasionally and get coffee. One cop was really into paranormal stuff. We used to talk for hours about that crap. He was in his 50s, but used to do be really into investigating the paranormal when he was in college. He was a really nice man who always dropped by every shift we shared to say hey. In my neighborhood there had been a string of robberies where the guys snuck in through the car wash. There's usually a door in there that will lead to the back room of the store. He wanted to check what our layout was, so I was showing him around, and he started telling me that he always got a weird feeling when he was there, like he knew something paranormal was happening. He stopped in the middle of the stockroom and said like it just got really cold. Right here. It's so different I didn't have the heart to tell him he was standing right under the air vents. That is perfectly hilarious. I mean, it could be a skit in a movie, and it would be so perfect. I was working in a call center for a major phone company. The guy sitting beside me got a call from an older woman who said there were little men climbing out of the wall receptacle. He asked if the men were wearing blue or green hats. The lady responded green excitedly, probably because someone finally knew what she was talking about. He then said, the green men are the responsibility of the utility company, call them. From around 2005, my mom's friend was a dispatcher. One day she gets a call from a screaming man that a ghost had stolen his penis. He was screaming loudly and yelling obscenities at her that she better send the frickin' Ghostbusters squadron to get his penis back. Then he offers her a date if she gets his penis back from the dong ghost. Apparently it was an internal call to test her ability to keep calm and retrieve as much information as possible from difficult or hysterical caller. I don't know if I believe it but it's a funny story. Comma apparently it was an internal call. Oh my god. The calls are coming from inside the house. Current police officer, once got called to a house, guy said attic door was open and it was closed earlier, also heard noises, roommates confirmed, it later was revealed they watched a scary movie and agreed they had actually went up there earlier and forgot, most of the paranormal calls are mental illness, had a lady claiming she was followed from another state by a man, and the man dug a tunnel into her house and was writing words all over her apartment and body, even alleged that while we were talking to her outside, her blinds moved upstairs. Of course nothing was written anywhere and there was no secret tunnel. Sister came over and told us that she recently started arthritis medicine and ever since she has been hallucinating. I worked for a guy on shift who had a legit story. When he was a younger patrol officer he got the urge to check this old cemetery where people were buried over 100 years ago and it's mostly abandoned and hidden. Well he was driving down the dirt road and found a man who hung himself from a tree. Well he radiated it in and long story short they cut the guy down and took him away and that was the end of the scene. Next night he comes back and the tree is gone. There was no stump. No sign of a tree. Never figured out where it went. That's some strong arthritis medication. 
So I'm not a cop but was an officer in the Air Force. As a very young captain I was asked by our first sergeant to come with him on a call to base housing. One of our super young airmen was deployed and the first sergeant didn't want to be alone in the house with THR wife because she was a bit irrational at best. He picked me up, thanked me and said we were on our way to check out reports of ghosts. I told him to stop joking with me, he said he wasn't. That for the last few weeks she'd been calling every other night or so reporting ghosts in the vacant house next door. Shared wall duplex. I asked why she didn't call security forces. She had and they hadn't found anything. And now the squadron commander was sick of her calls so he wanted the first sergeant to investigate the second the next call came in. We got there and sure enough there were sounds from the next house but it was unmistakably pee coming through the walls. Could not have been more clear. We knocked on the door to the vacant house and the noises stopped. Some scrambling and then silence. We called security forces. They called civil engineering and came over with a key. In the bedroom of this vacant house was a pretty elaborate little P set up. TV VCR combo about a dozen tapes and a lawn chair. There was a pretty obvious escape route entry out the window into the woods. The SF guys followed the trail and found a civilian employee looking for his keys in the woods. After some light questioning he admitted it was him and was turned over to the local police. I don't know what came of him. We talked to the wife and tried to understand why she thought it was ghosts because obviously the problem would have been solved much sooner if she hadn't framed it as a crazy ghost encounter. She told us she'd seen ghosts since she was little and that's what they always sounded like. So yeah. She told us she'd seen ghosts since she was little and that's what they always sounded like. So her parents really got it on apparently. My wife's grandfather was chief detective of homicide in Minneapolis for a number of years, and he has a lot of weird stories, but this is probably the grossest. One day the station got a call about a monster trying to break into a guy's apartment. At first they all had a bit of a laugh, they figured he was a drunk, or that he had smoked smoked too much and forgot what his dog looked like. But then they got another call, same building. A creature was banging on some woman's door. Okay, weird coincidence, but they call a car to head right over. Then a third call comes in a demon in the hallway. So at this point grandpa is pretty curious, so he volunteers to go check it out himself. When he gets there, he talks to the two cops that got there before him. They tell him that they haven't gone in yet because the first people they spoke with told them that they had heard a gunshot earlier, and they've been waiting for him to check it out. So they go in to find their monster. They get up to the floor where most of the calls have come from and are met with a grisly sight, as guy had tried to commit suicide by putting a shotgun under his chin, but must have flinched when he pulled the trigger, because he was alive, but he had blown his jaw and nose off. He was in extreme shock and was pounding on people's doors to try and get help, but when they looked through their peephole they would be staring at this animated bloody mass with some bone fragments sticking out. He looked pretty monstrous. We had a woman complaining of ghosts in her attic, and after checking for animals and other unwanted guests, she still was adamant about there being ghosts up there. To solve this, another officer went to his patrol car and got a LIDAR gun, radar gun that's more accurate due to using lasers, spun around while making it beep constantly, then confidently told the old lady you should be fine mom, I'm not picking up the presence of any spirits. She fully accepted that we carry paranormal activity equipment and was completely put at ease. It was a fun time. Worked mental health assignment for a few years. Had a call from a family of a man running around naked all around the neighborhood screaming that he had been abducted and had the knowledge of the ages or some such nonsense. We get there and get the guy contained and clothed and start trying to get some type of story out of him besides him being just out of his mind. He mentions that he had received a large court settlement the week before from a work related injury and that's why the aliens took him for his money. It's not super uncommon for there to be some truth to these stories so we go to the guy's wife to talk to her. She confirms that he had in fact received a very large settlement a week prior. No history of drug use. No history of mental illness. He just lost it. She then proceeds to ask us how she can go about accessing the money legally since he obviously had gone off the deep end. That's a little strange. We take Guy to the hospital and they do their normal panel of tests. Turns out the guy had a near fatal dose of some type of poison. I can't remember what it was, which generally will kill you. Detectives get involved. Wife ends up getting arrested for attempted murder. Guy made a full recovery too. 
A lot of these were funny but this one was just sad. I had a funny one where a woman was making dinner for her husband, getting it back ready in the microwave. He wasn't supposed to be home for another hour or so. She came back down to the kitchen and what she was heating up was gone. Same with the cutlery she left out. She called 911 and said there was either a ghost or someone broken and stole her husband's reheated leftovers. We went and found the husband out on the deck enjoying his meal thinking his wife had already left so he didn't bother looking her. Innocent story that had good timing for it to happen. I was dispatched to a report of a woman who claimed that there was a flying saucer hovering near her house. I query our database and she had no previous history of delusions or mental health issues. I head on over. It's in the affluent part of town. I walk over and talk to the woman. It's about midnight at this point. She seems totally normal and tells me she must be going crazy but there was a giant flying saucer. She points in the direction and I agree to check it out. I'm driving towards the area, which is totally remote with a mix of forests and farmland on the outskirts of town. I suddenly see this blinding light in the sky. I look up and guess what I see? A flying freaking saucer with all its lights on full blast. So there I am in my cruiser thinking what the frick and then I see it. The UFO is suspended by a crane and they were filming a movie. I took some law enforcement classes in college and one of my teachers who was a retired cop woke up in the middle of the night and thought his wife was walking around his house. He looks off into the end of his bed and tells his wife WTF are you doing? Get back in bed. She turns to him says I am in bed. Turns out that someone broke into his house and was watching him sleep or was going to rob him. He grabbed his gun and chased him away. That is really scary. We once received a report of either a fox or a werewolf standing a busy street corner in town. Tragically, neither was found. An uncle of mine is a retired sergeant with a large sheriff's office. In retirement he took up bodyguard work. Ended up working for a lady who came from big money. Anyway, he and my aunt live on her property in a fully furnished home and protect her from aliens. I crap you not. She is terrified of being abducted. Makes no claim to have even seen aliens. However, it's her number one fear. And since she has the resources, she pays for round the clock protection. Apparently she is a very warm and kind woman who in most aspects of life is fairly balanced. Needless to say, my uncle has so far enjoyed his retirement. Man, I could totally go into the protection from aliens field. So far I have 100% success rate. No abductions have happened while I'm around. Canadian paramedic here. We recently attended a woman who had run into her neighbor's house at 3am, screaming that she was being haunted. We talked to her while the police went through her house. Apparently she had been on the computer when her blinds opened themselves. While she was up looking at the blinds her computer chair spun itself. She ran back over to her computer and found that something had put gum on the seat. Not the most threatening item. But she was panicked. The police had found nothing, no gum, and we decided that they would take her someplace safe for the evening. We were just pulling away from the scene when the cruiser pulled up next to us. Turns out the back seat was haunted as well, and she ended up taking a ride with us to a comfy hospital bed. The house went up for sale that week but never sold. We went back recently and she was just getting ready for alcohol treatment. So problem solved. For a second I forgot what a paramedic was and thought you claimed to be a paranormal medic. I was a doorman security at an apartment complex that had a lot of tenants with various issues. One woman had a mental problem and was religious so every weird thing with her had a religious interpretation. Her symptoms manifested mainly when she went off her medications right before she was due to be re-evaluated for her government assistance. She had done things like cut all her walls and floors with knives because the neighbors were casting spells at her through her walls and floor. One night she came to me to report that she was in the elevator and Satan put his tail up her ass and now she was possessed with demons. Now the problem is that there was a real possibility that she had been actually raped and she interpreted that Satan had done it. So after checking the elevator and verifying details of the story, it came to be that she believed the actual Satan had put his actual tail in her ass and it was not someone actually assaulting her. An ambulance was called to deal with this demonic possession. Two cops show up. 
One was acting bored and did not want to deal with this while the other was talking to her as if he believed in her demons and was basically just keeping her going on and on with her delusions. The ambulance crew shows up and take her vitals and check for demons and they say they want to take her to Jewish hospital. She says she wants to go to Baptist hospital. This argument went back and forth until finally one of the crew says, if you are possessed by demons, we have to take you to Jewish. The Jews know all about expelling demons but the Baptists don't know anything about them at that point she hops up on the gurney and says okay, let's go. In a few days her medications were adjusted and she was okay until the next time. I work on a university. Got a 3am call of a haunted dorm room. Girls were in tears. They googled instructions for a home exorcism, made homebrew holy water, crosses and photos of Jesus plastered all over the walls. They said they would hear things like footsteps, a child's laughter, a whispering voice saying hey can you hear me. As we interviewed them, we heard it once. They screamed and burst into tears. There are, bless his heart, tried to help by offering the advice that at least the ghost wasn't threatening or malicious and probably meant us no harm. We asked him to leave rather than feed into the whole hysteria. Took us a while to pin down where he was coming from but to make a log story short, someone took one of those novelty motion activated prank things and stuck it to the inside of one of the bed frames. When we were done, we asked the girls if they minded if we disposed of the thing. To which they enthusiastically agreed, and we promptly hid it in our dispatcher's locker and watched the cycle continue. I took a few criminology courses in college. One of my professors was a retired local cop. He told us about an older woman who would call weekly because aliens were jumping around on her roof. They would send out an officer. The officer who went usually just stood outside in her front yard waving his baton and yelling at the aliens to go away until the old lady was happy. I can't remember when, but there was a story told by, I think, a lawyer a while back, wherein he solved a lady's ghost problem by issuing them an eviction notice. This is a tough one. Depending on paranormal definition, you could always count one of the dozens of police reports involving UFO sightings which turn out to be completely mundane stuff, or various skunk ape sightings that turned out to be homeless people. The best one I can think of comes from not me, but an acquaintance in the agency. The tale of the condo pool monster. Story takes place in winter of 13. For three straight nights, our communication center had been receiving phone calls from a particularly upscale condo complex claiming to hear monster noises and crashing from the pool area. We would send deputies out. Nothing would be found except occasionally overturned tables and trash cans. Residents would claim that they heard growling, howling, and screeching of all types, and sometimes even clawing at the window. One witness saw the shadowy figure of something the size of a bear, but walked like a rat. On night 4 the shift sergeant sat on the site himself for a little while, and the culprit was revealed. There were three raccoons sneaking into the complex and going through all of the trash cans. The biggest of them was the size of a large dog, huge and fat. Animal services was called out, but unfortunately the raccoon evaded capture. He never reportedly came back to the condos, and legends still say that raccoonosaurus looms large in the swampland, ready to strike again. There's a raccoon in my parents' neighborhood like this. My parents have a beagle pit mix and we've thought on more than one occasion that their dog was roaming around outside, but it was the raccoon. The neighborhood has named him Steve. Mine's pretty easy. Elderly lady would call with all kinds of complaints but ultimately always involved illegals living in her attic with the body of her son. After trying multiple things, and making sure there were no people or bodies in the house, we got mental health involved. She has dementia, and had been diagnosed for maybe 5 years. I'm not a police officer but I run a community mental health program that works with individuals that have psychotic spectrum disorders. One woman we work with told us about a man who would visit her each morning and sing hymns to her that no one else could see or hear. She really rather appreciated it. The more our worker spent time with her, though, the less she saw of him until ultimately he never showed up anymore. Basically, she had lived isolated for years before, and I believe her brain gave her this guy as companionship. Once she had our support, she no longer needed him and so he faded away. Kind of sad. I was reading an interesting article about this the other week. Apparently in different cultures, schizophrenia manifests differently. In the US and Western world if the patients hear voices they tend to be angry or evil. 
In other places, Japan and Africa for instance, they tend to be playful and mischievous. This is Pizza Cat he looks for people like you to befriend and give them the gift of unlimited pizza this can only be granted if you comment pizza please thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.